position <laughs> to give a presentation. Uh, and what, what I will present uh, to you is, uh, is a, a typical case of uh, uh, management of a crisis uh, on, on the vaccine communication. And uh, I want to, to, to state since the beginning that I will uh, uh, give you more questions than I will uh, provide answers, because I, I am aware that uh, uh, answering to what uh, I will pre be presenting, it's very difficult. Anyway, let's, let's see something that has been uh, d dealt with uh, uh, in, in several of the presentation of the, these two days uh, regarding the communication in, uh, in vaccination. These, uh, these are my conflicts of interest. Uh, let's start with the, with the vaccine that was uh, the object of this crisis. It's uh, Fluad, uh, which is a, a trivalent inactivated uh, uh, interpandemic influenza vaccine adjuvanted with MF-59. Uh, MF-59 is, is a squalene-based oil in water emulsion. This vaccine was approved in Europe in 1997. Uh, the serum protection is provided within two to three weeks after vaccination, uh, and uh, the duration of immunity is six to 12 uh, months. Uh, this, is, this was the composition of the uh, vaccine uh, during the 2014-2015 season that was the one where the crisis occurred. Uh, of course, as all vaccines, this vaccine has uh, uh, side effects. Uh, the, 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 those who are, which are reported in the, in the uh, summer of product characteristics are those who were uh, studied and, and, uh, and uh, found during uh, through clinical trials, so they are common side effects, uh, and, uh, well, but we are not uh, uh, worried about this. Uh, and these are the adverse reactions from post-marketing surveillance. I would like to underline that some of the, uh, many of these this, uh, uh, side effects, uh, as you know, as you all know, uh, are not uh, causally related to, to the vaccine, but they, they must be uh, uh, put into the uh, package insert when they are uh, uh, notified with a certain uh, frequency by, by the surveillance system. Uh, how, how, how was the, the distribution of, uh, of this vaccine during the 2014-15 uh, uh, campaign? Uh, about four million doses were distributed in Italy, so in, in all the country. And in this map, you can see which were the countries where most of the uh, doses were distributed uh, during that year. So uh, not all European countries uh, use, use this, uh, this kind of vaccine. These are the news. Uh, I took this from BBC, so it was an internationally covered uh, crisis, uh, saying that Italy suspends flu, flu vaccine from Novartis after deaths. And, uh, uh, the story starts uh, uh, when uh, uh, three, three deaths are notified within 48 hours from vaccination, and uh, this prompts uh, the uh, national uh, pharmacy, the, 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 nation, the national drug agency uh, called AIFA in Italy, to suspend uh, two batches of Fluad uh, as a precautionary measure, uh, owing to, to these three deaths and another uh, serious, uh, serious uh, adverse, event, adverse event after vaccination. And the statement from IFA at the beginning of the crisis was, a full picture will be formed only after a full analysis of all aspects, including the general health of this patient, or the patients, their ages and probably conditions they might be, uh, have had. So uh, who were the three uh, dead people? Uh, they were three elderly, uh, 87, 79, and 68 year old, uh, and the deaths occurred between the 12th and the 18th of November. Who was the first case? I'm sorry, this is in Italian because, of course, the story is told uh, by, by the local uh, newspapers and, and websites. Uh, this, uh, this, this was a man, a 60-year-old man, who got the vaccine, then he went to the market, and a uh, uh, few, few minutes after, after going to the market, he went back to the office of the, the doctor, saying he had the chest pain, and uh, in, a, in a half an hour, he died. So it was an immediate uh, death after, after the vaccine. And uh, uh, what you can see in the end, at the end of the, of the page is uh, that the doctor who notified th this case said, I had to notify it because I know it's my duty, but uh, I'm convinced and uh, it, it's sure that uh, this has nothing to do with the vaccine. But uh, I, I had to do this. Uh, so cardiovascular event one hour after vaccination. 
The other two deaths were another one in Sicily uh, uh, of an 87-year-old uh, man, and uh, uh, the third one was a 79-year-old woman in, uh, in Molise, uh, uh, central southern uh, uh, region uh, in, on, on the Adriatic Sea. Uh, both cases uh, were uh, apparently due to some kind of encephalitis meningitis, so there was an involvement of the central nervous system. But uh, I would like to underline that uh, in the uh, two cases in men, there were uh, uh, underlying chronic conditions before, before the, the vaccine was given. This brought to a, a, a hysteria case in Italy because uh, uh, between the 27th and, and the 30th of November, uh, media uh, coverage was impressive in Italy. You can see there uh, uh, a poster uh, outside the, 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 the newspaper selling uh, uh, post uh, where they, they, they say uh, the vaccine kills uh, three people and uh, uh, that, that, that's a worrying situation. Uh, so in a few days, uh, uh, the suspected deaths ra raised to uh, 11. Uh, and uh, uh, IFA stated at the same time that uh, it's not excluded that we are retiring our other lots of the vaccine. And uh, in a few days, it, uh, the, the number of deaths which were reported after vaccination were, was 13. But of course, that was prompted by, by the media coverage uh, regarding the, the suspected deaths. So which were the immediate consequences? Uh, the National Drug Agency, IFA, uh, stated, we are getting other reports that we are examining and other lots of the vaccine may be withdrawn. The new reports may be linked to a possible contamination. I think that uh, this, this statement was even worse than the first statement because uh, uh, the suspect uh, 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 fueled by, by newspapers and media was even uh, uh, refueled by, by the National Drug Agency. Uh, deaths that had been linked to the vaccine were mainly cardiovascular related and could have been the result of a pre-existing illness. Uh, of course, the producer Novartis at the time defended its robust safety record saying that they had no signal of any problem in the production process for the vaccine. Regional health authorities across Italy weighed, uh, weighed whether to temporarily suspend flu vaccination, but not only the, the one with the flu, the, the, the overall program of vaccination. Uh, health authorities in two regions, Liguria and Veneto, but also in Rome, suspended flu vaccinations while clinics and pharmacies checked their stocks for the suspicious batches. And there was one uh, uh, consumer organization, Codacons, uh, which is one of the biggest, but I, I should say one of the worst, because they are attacking uh, vaccination every day, every day. Uh, they they uh, claimed and they, they asked uh, the Ministry of Health to suspend the vaccination campaign. Uh, on the 1st of December, the, the Italian Institute of Health, which is responsible for the, for the controls of, of purity of vaccine, uh, they announced the first results, uh, test results, uh, and in preliminary tests, they stated that uh, there was no evidence of a contamination, no defects in production, no endotoxins, the content and characteristics of the vaccine virus antigen were compliant with the quality standards. The characteristics of the reported deaths already seem to rule out contamination by microorganisms. That was rather timely, but it was not sufficient at all to stop the, the crisis. So uh, the Italian rapporteur to IMA uh, presented information on the report, the serious advanced events for, uh, for advice by the EMA Pharmacovigilance Risk Assessment Com Committee, or PRAC, on the review uh, performed. And on the 4th of December, the PRAC took into account the likely high population exposure to the vaccine uh, over the previous two months, the background mortality rate in the general population uh, of more than 65 years, the lack of a consistent clinical pattern among the serious adverse events leading to a fatal outcome. Uh, so, considering the, that the reports were re, uh, unrelated to vaccination, uh, the PRAC concluded that there was no evidence of a causal link between flu ad and the uh, uh, adverse events that were reported in that period. Uh, on the 23rd of December, so uh, about uh, uh, 19 days later than this uh, statement, 
the National Institute of Health, Instituto Superior di Sanità, released the final test results, uh, so the abnormal toxicity test and the sterility test, confirming that uh, the vaccine was totally safe. And so on that day, the ban on the fluid batches was removed. This is the story. Some considerations. Uh, in Italy, we have every year around 600,000 deaths, uh, with uh, more than half a million deaths in those over 65 years. Each day we have uh, 1,400 deaths in the over 65. These are the coverage uh, showing that the, the coverage was, was going down. So each day, uh, all, uh, around 800 uh, deaths uh, uh, occur in the over 65 who have been vaccinated against influenza. So uh, we can say also that each day, if we, uh, if we uh, think that all the population should be vaccinated, we would have uh, 38 deaths uh, in the over 65 within 14, 48 hours within uh, vaccination. But if we take into account that uh, we have uh, more or less 50% coverage. We can say that uh, 15 to 20 deaths in Italy are expected within 48 hours uh, from vaccination. That's, that's the, uh, the calculation of the uh, raw numbers that we are expecting uh, after vaccination. So uh, knowledge of the background incidence of events uh, which may occur in temporal relationship with the vaccine is of paramount importance. Uh, and uh, it, it's, it is essential to assess cluster of events in terms of the strength of the signal. Uh, there was a, an experience, a similar experience in Israel in 2006, where four deaths occurred in the elderly, uh, and the campaign was uh, temporarily halted for an investigation. And uh, uh, in, the, in that campaign, they, they calculated that uh, uh, in similarly age vaccinees, within seven days of a vaccine exposure, there was a, a 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 percent. Uh, chance of dying. And so uh, the background uh, uh, rate of death in the population was relatively high as a result of age and comorbid conditions. Uh, so it's very important and I would like to refer back to a very, very well-known uh, uh, paper from, uh, from Black and from uh, Clarence Sigrist uh, that uh, shows the, uh, the importance of background rates of disease in, in the assessment of vaccine safety. Uh, and we have to refer to the uh, pre-existing level of, of deaths that uh, occur normally in a population. So uh, media reporting bias, according to the IFA chairman of the board, uh, who, who said that the increase in the number of serious adverse events reported in the result is the result of the impact of the media coverage uh, of the event on both healthcare workers and the private citizens. Uh, there was an interesting study following the, 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 this fluid case by the group of uh, Professor Signorelli in Parma, who tried to measure the impact of uh, this crisis on uh, uh, newspapers, uh, and the, the main newspapers in Italy. Uh, of course, the ease with which information can be disseminated now, uh, now means that, that negative comments about vaccines can go viral on the internet without balanced professional input. And here, this is, these are the interesting results of this study, where uh, according to the key event that occurred in that period, uh, you can see the, the media coverage. And uh, the first event uh, is uh, on the 3rd of September, the release of the Ministry of Health cir circular containing recommendation for influenza prevention. Zero coverage on the main newspapers. No, this is no news. Second key event on the 27th of November, reporting of three deaths uh, uh, to be uh, suspected to be associated with the fluid and, and suspension of two batches. You can see how many uh, articles were written in that, on that day, and a lot of them. These are the, ma the, ma the, the main widespread uh, uh, newspapers in Italy, so they are not so many, but they, they, they wrote a lot of, of articles. The third event is on the 1st of December, first safety result released. And the coverage is, uh, uh, the, the, the white uh, column is uh, uh, good, but uh, uh, much less than the, the news uh, on the, on the uh, suspension of the batches. The, the, the fourth key event is the PRAC conclusions released, I would say almost zero coverage. And uh, the fifth key event on the 23rd of December, final safety results re released, zero coverage. 
So you can see how disproportionate is the coverage in the media when there is bad news and when there is uh, reassuring news on the same event. Uh, so the, negatives, the negative events are far more noticeable than positive ones. Of course, the scientific societies try to reassure, saying that the number of deaths that occurred in that period was uh, well within the, 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 the expected number of deaths. But all the same, uh, and it's saying that in, every day, eight, uh, 800 uh, elderly uh, die who were vaccinated. The result is uh, that uh, the coverage in Italy uh, went uh, further down. Uh, it was already going down before. Uh, I, I would say because uh, uh, it started going down after the pandemic season because of the uh, media coverage on the pretended uh, excess vaccines that were bought that year because the pandemic was not so bad after all. And so the, the, the Ministry of Health should have known before and should not have bought so many, so many uh, doses. And uh, it was going down also for other two crises in the, in the previous season, influenza season. It, it may, maybe you remember there was uh, a, a claim on, uh, on uh, some uh, uh, powder in the suspension of the same vaccine of the Fluad. And uh, in the same season, there was uh, a withdrawal of uh, uh, the uh, Crucial vaccine of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Inflexal because of the suspect uh, environmental contamination. So, we had the several reasons why uh, the vaccine uh, coverage was going down, and this was the final uh, very bad event that brought it to, to very low coverage. So you can see that uh, we, we, we had reached 66% in 2006-2007. Into we went down to 48.6%, uh, and in some region even uh, under 40%. So this, is, this was the, the coverage in the general population, and this, and this is the coverage in the people aged more than 65. Uh, and this is the trend of the coverage uh, along the year. So 68% in, uh, in the, uh, in the uh, golden age of, of influenza vaccination, 486 uh, in 2014, 2015. Uh, I, I must also... Uh, uh, tell you that uh, it was fortunate that this crisis occurred at the end of the November when many people had already received the vaccine because otherwise it would have been much bad, much worse. So our reaction as a scientific uh, word was uh, that we wrote a, a, a letter to, to BMJ uh, where we uh, provided the data on the calculation of how many deaths were expected all the same in that period. And uh, provocatively we asked ourselves, is it time to rethink pharmacovigilance regulations on vaccines to prevent outbreaks of generalized panic from compromising immunization campaigns and negatively affecting disease-related outcomes, thereby generating extremely serious health and economic losses for individuals and society? I, it's a, an interrogative I would like to underline. So we don't know if this is, this is uh, really needed, but we, we, we must found, find a way not to, to experience this kind of crisis any longer. So uh, it's important to, to, to go back to causality assessment uh, concept because it's the systematic review of data about the and adverse event, events following immunization case. It aims to determine the likelihood of a causal association. Uh, it can help to, to identify a coincidental uh, adverse event that is falsely attributed to a vaccine product, uh, uh, and, and this is a vital uh, um, consideration. It is seldom possible to achieve a straightforward answer to the question, did the vaccine given to a particular individual cause the particular event reported? It's not easy, of course. In most cases, the assessment involves systematic consideration of all possible causes of an adverse event in order to, ar to arrive to a at a conclusion. So we have, oh, we, we have to consider, <laughs> we have to consider several uh, problems. <laughs> one, one is temporal relationship. So of course the vaccine exposure must precede the event. Uh, we need definitive proof that the vaccine caused the event, uh, the clinical or laboratory proof. Uh, population, the population-based evidence for causality is also important. Uh, uh, what is known about can it? Uh, and also the biological plausibility is important. Uh, where there is no clear yes or no, 
the answer on biological plausibility may provide support for or against vaccine causality. We must consider alternative explanations, but also pre-existing or newly acquired uh, illness. Uh, prior evidence that the vaccine in question could cause a similar event is also a, an important consideration. So if we look at the causality assessment and adverse events following an immu uh, immunization uh, provided by, manual provided by uh, the World Health Organization, we, we need to assess evidence for other causes. Uh, association with the vaccine products, immunization error or immunization anxiety with the, with an, uh, within an appropriate time window. If there is evidence against the causal association, and other qualifying factors for classification, such as the background rate of the event, present and past health conditions, potential risk factors, medications, biological plausibility, and so on. So there is a, a, a clear algorithm to, to, uh, to uh, define if uh, a, va a vaccine event has been caused by, by the vaccine itself. So, and in the end, we can classify this as consistent, inconsistent, indeterminate outcome, or unclassifiable. Uh, the EU the pharmacovigilance system uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, an important uh, help to, to, to verify what, what is going on. Uh, uh, pharmacovigilance is, 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 is crucial. There was a change in the regulations of pharmacovigilance in 2012, uh, bringing to uh, new regulations that are enforced from uh, uh, June and, or, and October 2013. And uh, the EMA has released good pharmacovigilance uh, practice guidelines, GVP, in order to facilitate the performance of, uh, of pharma pharmacovigilance activities. What are the main pillars of the new legislation? Uh, strengthen strengthening and rationalizing the system is, is uh, the, 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 the key uh, message. It improves pa patient safety and public health uh, uh, through better prevention, detection, and assessment of adverse reactions. There is a new definition for an adverse reaction, uh, also including uh, medication errors and uses outside the terms of the marketing authorization, including the misuse and abuse of the medicinal product. Uh, the, new, the new regulation allowed patients to report the adverse events directly to the competent authorities. And uh, there are clear tasks and responsibility for all parties, pa parties including marketing authorization holders, so the, 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 the vaccine companies and uh, the competent authorities and EMA. And uh, uh, that regulation also uh, instituted the PRAC, the, the, uh, the Pharmacovigilance Risk Assessment Commit Committee, as a, a key uh, element of uh, the verification of these uh, 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 pretended uh, adverse events. In Italy, we uh, enforced a similar, similar system. Uh, uh, the Pharmacovigilance Network is widespread uh, in the country. Uh, um, coordinated by the regional authorities and the, and the autonomous provinces of uh, Trento and Bolzano, more than 200 local health authorities, 100 hospitals, 43 research institutes, more than 800 pharmaceutical companies and IFA uh, going together for this uh, big uh, endeavor of uh, uh, conducting pharmacovigilance and vaccine vigilance. Of course, uh, uh, everything is uh, uh, conducted in, uh, in, uh, uh, in connection with the European Network for Pharmacovigilance and uh, UDRA vig Vigilance. So this is the flow of the, of the uh, uh, data, uh, both from patients and healthcare workers to IFAR or to the Pharmacovigilance system, and report uh, to uh, UDRA Vigilance and to WHO of uh, severe events within 15 days and uh, not severe within 19 days. Of course, we must recognize that uh, it's not easy to manage this kind of crisis, and the causality is not easy to assess, uh, especially in mass vaccination programs, because uh, uh, the signal detection should be as uh, real-time as possible, ideally to inform decision-making as the vaccination progresses. Uh, but wh when there is a high vaccine uptake, uh, the incident cases of, of many natural diseases in the given population courts will occur in temporal association with vaccination. So it's very difficult to understand what, what's happening. The, what, are, what are the priorities in, in those situations? To identify rapidly possible new signals, rapidly assess the likelihood, the likelihood that the number of reports may be consistent with the expected background incidence in the vaccinated court. Effective communication about safety is difficult, and new suspected adverse events must be very rapidly investigated and distinguished from coincidental uh, illnesses. 
a single report of a serious adverse events occurring in temporal association with vaccination, especially if, if the event is unsuspected or fatal, could uh, have a detrimental imp impact on, on the vaccination coverage and vaccination programs because uh, uh, there is a, a risk of amplification of that information. Uh, a single report of serious adverse events should be processed as a signal only if there is a possible causal association uh, to the vaccine. And this requires, of course, a lot of information uh, on clinical course of the event, medical history before, before uh, the event occurred, vaccination history, co-medication, and uh, also details on the vaccine, on the, on the, on the brand, on the batch, and, and so on. Signal, signal validation should be also be based on contextual information. And if adequate data are available on the number of vaccinated individuals of the same age category, the observed and expected numbers of cases should be estimated and, and evaluated if there is something which is higher than expected. Uh, in the absence of a known quality issue, decision making on a precautionary recall of, or quarantine is difficult as a causal association with the vaccine can re re rarely be established at the time when the, an initial decision is required. It's very hard for those who have to decide yesterday, yeah, the day before yesterday we, we, we discussed also with, with Priya that uh, if, you, if there is something wrong and you are, n and you are not suspending the batch, uh, you are in big trouble <laughs> as a regulator. But from the other side, if you suspend and there is nothing, you are destroying a, a vaccination program. So it's a very difficult balance to find. For single fatal adverse events, particularly where the cause of death is unknown, the reporting rate of the event relative to, to both the usage of the vaccine batch and the expected age-specific all-cause mortality should be considered before deciding on a recall or quarantine action. But, and also the probability that this is a chance association should be considered. On the other hand, when contamination of a batch, of a batch is suspected, uh, localized action might be considered before escalation to a national recall or quarantine. But I would like to also to, to, to uh, listen to your consideration on this, uh, if this is easy or not uh, in, a, in a crisis situation. So to go to my final consideration and to, and to my conclusion, a proper communication is essential. I think that we have to invest a lot on, on communication, but uh, this was the fil rouge of, of all, 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 the, all the session we had uh, this morning and this afternoon. Communication should help preventing anxiety-related reactions. Any potential risks should be clearly communicated. Uh, safety communication about the vaccine should also describe the benefits of vaccines, so pro the proactive uh, uh, approach that we underlined the, today. Communication planning should include being prepared for a frequent public communication needs, such as those regarding excipients, residues, uh, identified or potential risks for individuals with special conditions, coincidental events, temporal versus causal association. We must know the relevant background rates by age group and sex of signs and symptoms, the, and, and this should be kept up to date as well as the exposure data. Communication planning should also include uh, preparing standard text uh, because they might be uh, useful when uh, the crisis occurs and everybody wants to say something which is not uh, wrong. Uh, concerns raised by the public should also be addressed by proactively communicating results of the benefit risk evaluations. Competent authorities should ensure appropriate communication with the public and in particular the media. But also WHO uh, gave some uh, hints on how to uh, manage the pre-crisis, the during crisis, and the post-crisis uh, situation. So I come to my conclusions. Uh, my conclusion is that uh, in, uh, in our opinion, uh, during the so-called fluid cases, critical phases were those of signal detection, validation, and also exchange of information. I didn't tell you, but there was a dramatic lack of uh, interrelation between the drug agency and the Ministry of Health at the time so that the Ministry of Health knew of the suspension of the batches, only reading that on the web uh, site of the drug agency, which, the, the, which is something that shouldn't at all occur <laughs> in a country. Uh, withdrawal of batches is foreseen even in the in case of a single severe suspected adverse reaction. However, other experts should have been taken into consideration, the biological plausibility and alternative causes. Reported deaths are within the number of expected deaths among vaccinated elderly population. 
But uh, however, the media coverage had an impact in increasing vaccine hesitancy, and uh, the coverage for the bad events was disproportionately higher than for the good news coming later. Uh, a task force for the management of vaccine crisis is strongly needed. I think that without uh, a coordinated effort and a, coordinate and, and a shared responsibility, uh, we might experience this again in the future. Better communication on vaccine safety to is, is needed to restore trust into this for formidable uh, primary prevention tool. This is, uh, of course, uh, of crucial importance. I would like to, to leave you with the final uh, uh, picture, which is prepared by our friend Ulrike, who is, who is uh, the, the sentinel of the web in Italy, and she, she's uh, working a lot and with much patience, patient in uh, uh, facing the, the problem of, of anti-vaccine movement, and these are the the Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy uh, telling themselves we were right to come on, up on foot better not to rely on elevators who knows how many risks they do not tell us. And with this, I thank you for your attention.